In this video, we're going to be doing a power jack repair on a Dell B130 laptop. First thing I want to do here is check the power adapter cord, make sure the cord is okay. A lot of times cords come in and they're, they could be frayed, they could be bent, the pins could be messed up. So I take the voltmeter here and I set it to 20 volts because typically a laptop power adapter is 18 volts. And you're going to see I take the black tip and I put it on the outside of the pin and I take the red tip and I put it on the inside of the pin and I'm bending the cord around here to make sure that it's making a connection. You could see it was 19 volts and that's correct. So we know the cord is okay at this point. The outside of the, of the tip of the power adapter is usually negative which is black and the inside is usually positive which is red. So that's why I did it that way. Now I'm testing to see if I jiggle the cord around in here does it actually make the laptop go on or give it power? I want to just determine if it really is the power jack that's bad or not. And I'm bending and bending and it's still giving it no power. Now I know the power adapter is good, so therefore it's telling me that the jack is bad in the laptop or it could be another motherboard problem. So we're going to open it up and see what's going on in there. I usually put a piece of foam down when I'm working on laptops just so I don't, I don't scratch the surface when I flip them over. That piece of foam is from, uh, if you buy a motherboard, normal like MATX motherboard, that's usually the piece of foam that comes in the box and they're great for working on laptops in this case. Now what I want to do is start taking out components. Like you see, I just pulled the battery out. Now I'm going to pull the RAM out, the wireless card out, then I'm going to pull the hard drive out as well. Now the reason I do this is I want to get everything out of the way. See I'm going to be working on the motherboard so anything that's attached to the motherboard or touching the motherboard that's going to be loose I want to get it out. So the first thing I do when I, when I do a power jack repair is I just take all the components that I can out of the computer. Now in this case there's a little flap there. You see I lifted that flap up it revealed the heat sink which sits on top of the processor, so I could take that off as well. Sometimes you can't get to the heatsink until you open up the laptop all the way. And you'll see the processor sitting there under it. I'm going to pull off the wireless card. And I'll tell you a little, little bit later why it's really important to get the wireless card out of there. And then one screw, pull out that one screw and a CD drive comes out. Laptops. The key to working on laptops is, in my opinion, to get the motherboard out, you want to get the screen and the keyboard off first. And the key to getting the screen and the keyboard off is to remove that flap, that tab, that, that piece of plastic that sits right above the keyboard you saw me trying to pry open. Sometimes it's screwed in from the bottom. So I don't know if it's screwed in from the bottom or not in this computer, but I'm going to be taking all the screws out anyway, so I might as well pull out all the screws that I that appear to be under that plastic piece just in case there is a screw holding it in then I'm gonna pry it open just with a screwdriver you'll see a lot of Dells on the right hand side there's a little tab there you put a screwdriver in it pulls it right up sometimes you gotta get right under the hinge there that's a good way to do it with a, with a flathead screwdriver and if the end is a little tricky to get off I hit it again with the flathead screwdriver right under the hinge usually pops right off now don't force that if you have to force it there's probably screws holding it in and then we got two screws holding the keyboard in here. Once those two screws are out, the keyboard should flop right up. And what I'm doing is recharging my screwdriver magnetically. That's just a magnet that came out of a speaker or, or something, I believe. And when I lose a magnetic charge on my screwdriver, which I like to have to pull out, pull out screws, uh, I just rub it up against that magnet and it recharges the screwdriver. Now the keyboard's going to flop up and over, and you have to uh, pop that ribbon cable off, and there goes the keyboard. This is the LCD cable. After I get the keyboard out, I like to get the screen out of the way. A screen's a very delicate part of the computer, so let's get it out of the way so we don't mess it up when we're trying to get to the motherboard.
So you want to pull out any connect, also pull out any connectors that are attached to the motherboard. This could be ribbon cables, this could be battery connections, this could be like trackpad connections, which I'm pulling out here. You don't want any of those ribbon cables attached to the motherboard because when we pull the top plate off, those ribbon cables might rip if they're still attached. Now, in this com particular computer, it's a little out of the frame. Okay, we're going to put it, put it in. There's two screws holding the monitor in. These screw right into the hinges, and it keeps the monitor screwed right into the hinges. Now, again, on this computer, I'm, you see I'm kind of recklessly throwing the screws into a pile. There's no particular way I'm taking them out because they're all labeled on this particular dough. You can tell the size of the screws by the label next to the screw hole, which is great in, in if the computer offers that. A lot of Dells do. Toshiba does. And so now that the screen's off, we're just going to start unscrewing every screw that's holding the top plate on and the bottom plate on. Because we want to get to that motherboard. If we could get to the power jack at this point straight on, I wouldn't have to do this step, but... It's the power jack is hidden in between the two, uh, the top and bottom cover, so we have to get them off to get to the power jack. Now I'm just pulling every screw, every place I see a screw hole, I'm taking that screw out of the bottom case. Now, I'm not touching any screws on the motherboard itself, just the screws that are screwed into the case. Just going to give it a check there and make sure I got them all, and then make sure I got the, got the same ones done on the top. And if the case comes apart as easy as that, then you know you got them all. Now, we're going to take a look at the power jack here and see what's going on. I'm putting that screwdriver in the power jack hole there to shake the pin around. Now, the pin inside the power jack may be loosely attached to the motherboard, and that's why you're not getting a connection. Now, mind you, that cord, the power adapter cord is not plugged in right now to the outlet, to the wall, so it doesn't have power. And you'll see that that center pin, the one that's actually pointing in a different direction, is loose from the motherboard. It's not actually making connection on the motherboard there. So we're going to have to re-solder that point to the motherboard. And when we jiggle the power adapter, you'll be able to see that pin inside move up and down and not really be soldered strongly to the motherboard. And that's what we're going to be fixing here. So to get to that point, we got to take off, take the motherboard out of the machine. Because we need to get to the top part of the jack, and we got to get to the bottom part of the jack. So we can only get to the bottom from here. So we're going to take the motherboard out of the bottom case. Now I'm unscrewing screws from the motherboard. Usually on a motherboard, if you see that white arrow I'm pointing at there, a white arrow will point to the screws that you need to take out to get the motherboard out. There's several other screws in that motherboard that I'm not taking out. Usually, it will guide you. That only the ones with the white arrows, only the screws that are next to the white arrows, are the ones you should have to take out to get the whole motherboard out. So you'll see I, don't, I didn't need to take the fan off or the PCMCIA slot, or a couple other things, just because I followed the white arrows and just took those four or five screws out and kept the motherboard in. Now that the motherboard's out, we're going to operate here. We're going to fix that power jack using a special technique that I do. But first, since we got the motherboard out, we're going to hit it with some compressed air. That was time-lapsed right there. I actually took it outside and I blew all the air out. There's a lot of dust that accumulates in that fan, and now that you have access to it, you might as well take advantage of that and just blow it out. Okay, so I'm taking a look here, just inspecting the best way to go about attacking this problem. And I'm just going to get some materials here, like a soldering iron. That's just a typical 15 watt Radio Shack soldering iron that I'm using. And I'm going to pull some other tools out here. I'm going to get a file. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to file off a spot on the motherboard. 
where I can reattach the power jack. See, what we're going to do is a technique that I like to do where I use a wire to reattach the power jack to the motherboard. I use a wire because it has flexibility and it won't be as brittle as attaching the, the actual pin from the power jack straight to the motherboard. They have a tendency, if it's going to break, if it breaks once, it's going to have a tendency to keep breaking. So I'm going to use a technique here where I use a wire in place of the actual post, the actual pin that comes out of the center of the back of the power jack. The first thing I need to do is scuff off, file down a, a bare spot on that motherboard where that pin actually attaches to, where the power jack pin actually attaches to. Okay, now that that's filed down, I'm also going to attach a pin right to the back of the power jack. And then I'm going to wrap that wire from the pin down to the other underside of the motherboard and solder it at both ends. Now I'm filing this down. The reason I file it is so the solder will stick. I want to make a good solder connection because I don't want this ever to break again. There's the solder. The soldering iron should be hot enough. Now, I'm not a soldering professional, so my techniques might not be by the book, but they work for me, and that's why I'm going to show you what I do. First, I'm going to cut a piece of wire the right length to wrap from the top of the power jack around the underside of the motherboard, and which will attach to the the spot that we filed out on the under, underside of the motherboard. And that length of wire should do it. Now what I'm going to use here is a little device called Helping Hands. I got at Radio Shack. It's actually missing one of its alligator clips, so it's actually a helping hand. But it'll work for what we're doing. And all it does is it allows you to um, hold things while you work on them. It's like an extra set of hands. Okay, what I did there with the helping hand was solder both ends of that wire, which I didn't catch on film, but I'll show you afterwards. And then I just put a dab of solder on the back of the power jack there, on that spot I was filing, right at the back of the power jack, that pin. It's the positive point. The whole outside of that power jack, the metal on the outside is negative. That's ground, your ground connection. And my hand's in the way, but you'll see the finished product. I will hold it up to the camera. I just soldered that wire to the back of the power jack. And then I bent it around the underside of the motherboard. And now I'm going to solder it to the point that we filed down on the underside of the motherboard. Now that point on the underside of the motherboard, which right now I'm attaching, I'm just, I'm just putting a little drop of solder on it. And then I'm going to just... Take the wire, which also has solder on, on the end of the wire already, which I did with the helping hands. I'm just going to melt that point onto the point of the motherboard where I just dropped a piece of solder. Now that point on the motherboard that we filed earlier, you need to make sure that that point is the exact spot that the pin from the power jack actually connects to on the motherboard. You can't just connect it to any spot on the motherboard. It has to be, you have to find out where that pin on the power jack goes to on the motherboard, and then you have to attach the solder or the wire to that point, which you'll see right there. Now I'm going to freeze frame that. Now notice that wire is attached to the motherboard right where that pin comes through the underside of the motherboard. It's essentially the same contact point. That's very important. You could tell it's the same contact point because of the light green color. Well, now that that's connected, and we tested with the pliers to make sure it was a strong connection, the soldering is essentially done. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure. And you'll see that basically what we're doing here is bypassing the pin for the power jack with the wire. It's better to use a wire, in my opinion, because of the flexibility, like I said before. Now what we're going to do is clear off the desk a little bit and start to put everything back together. Put the soldering iron away, put the helping hands, wires away, files away. 
Now that you have the motherboard out, hit it with some compressed air. Now's your chance to make sure the motherboard is clean. It's fully exposed. You might as well take that opportunity and clean everything, clean it up a little bit. And we're going to take the bottom case. We're going to slip the motherboard back in. Take out my trusty paintbrush here and just paint the dust off of the... It's just a bare paintbrush, never been touched by paint. And we're going to just take the dust off of the bottom case with the paintbrush. Okay, you want to make sure you get the motherboard lined up properly. And if you notice anything else on the motherboard that you need to do before you put it in, now's the time. And what I'm doing now is, as I was eyeing it up, I saw that there might be some metal in the bottom part of the case that might hit that wire that we just attached. So I'm going to take a piece of electrical tape, maybe two, and cover up the exposed wire that we just attached just in case there's a ground point on the bottom part of the case that would hit it and cause a short circuit. So we're basically insulating the job we did. Now we have to do that sometimes because using the wire, because that's not what was originally in the machine, it might jut out a little bit and make contact with a piece of metal, you know, in the bottom case or somewhere else in the machine. Make sure you, you get it in exactly right. It should fit exa in exactly right. There shouldn't be any points that are um, forced upwards or bent. It should fit in perfectly. If it's not, find out why. Like for this in example, there's a connector that's under there that needs to come up on the upper side of the motherboard rather than sitting on the underside of the motherboard. And once it's in there solidly, it's time to screw the screws back in. And remember, the screws go where the white arrows are. Okay, we're going to make sure all the screws are in. I'm just being very careful here. This is the point where you have to be careful you're using all the original screws. So when you get the whole thing back together, you're not left, left with some stray screws, which has happened to me often in the beginning. Now I'm going to take more electrical tape and do the same thing to the underside of the motherboard as I did with the top part we did. Just cover up that contact point that we created. Just because with the wire there, it might be jutting out or popping out a little bit higher than was originally there with the original solder connection. So we just want to be extra extra careful. Because as you can see, the whole top of this upper case is metal. And if that positive red wire that we just attached, which is the positive in the circuit, touches that metal, which is ground, which is negative, we're going to create a short circuit. So you really don't want that to happen. So just uh, if you feel the, the least bit apprehensive about it, Cover up your work with electrical tape. You'll be okay. okay. We just want to make sure this lines up exactly and it should snap right in. I'm going to pull that one wire through, which is actually the wireless card wire. Just make sure that's in the right spot. Pull it up and through. There it is. The whole case snaps back on. And there's my pile of screws. Time to just put them all back. And what I'm actually going to do is speed up the recording here. Because you saw how I took it apart. You use the same screws to put it back together. You don't need to watch it in real time. It will probably get a little boring. And very important, as you can see what I was doing there, attach all the ribbon cables that you unattached in the beginning, like the ribbon cable that goes to the touchpad. That needs to attach to the motherboard and any other ribbon cables that are there.
it would be really nice if I could work this fast in real time, wouldn't it? Put the heat sink back on. Now I screw the heat sink in in a cross pattern, like you're putting on a tire. You don't want to put too much pressure on one side of the heat sink and hurt your processor. So put it on a couple turns here, a couple turns there, just like you're putting on a tire. That's how I put heat sinks back on the processors. Put your wireless card in, put the hard drive in, put the RAM back in, put the covers back on, and we're almost done here. Make sure you get all the screws in, put the CD drive in, hold, held in by one screw. Get the screen back on, attach the LCD cable, attach the wireless card cable, which is basically an antenna that usually, the screen usually has an LCD cable and the wireless card cable coming through it. And that wireless card cable goes to the top of the screen to provide an antenna. Attach all the ribbon cables, now these screws I'm screwing in now are actually holding in the hinges of the screen. I couldn't put these in until I actually had the screen in, otherwise there would be no threads. The hinges actually have the threads in them. And now that that's tight, put the keyboard back on. Make sure it's attached properly. Put the two screws on that hold the keyboard on. Then snap that panel back into place, which we know doesn't have any screws holding it in from the bottom. We know that now. Make sure it's in tight. Make sure that it fits in exactly how it was when you first took it apart. And there you have it. Now let's test it out. Plug the power adapter in. Before we do that, it's actually a good idea to test if there's a short circuit in your work before you plug the power adapter in because you don't want to mess anything up. So I'm taking the red there, I'm attaching it to the center pin of the power jack and that black connection is actually uh, hitting a ground point on the other side of the, the uh, computer which you can't see. And if I hear a beep on my power meter, that will indicate a short circuit and then I know I did something wrong, I have to take the whole thing apart. It would have been smart to test this before I put the whole thing back together, but I'm getting cocky now in my work, so sometimes I put it all together knowing that it's just going to work. Plug the power adapter in, and we're going to take a look down at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen there. You're going to see that the light comes on, it powers on. This is with no battery, so we know that it's working. And that's how you do it. A power jack repair on a Dell B130 laptop.